Good morning. This is Steve from Southern Illinois. It's a nice, hot, muggy summer morning here. I'm very thankful for air conditioning today. When I was nine, our family moved from rural New Mexico to the metropolis of Enterprise, Kansas, population 868-ish at the time. There my brother and I enjoyed the unbelievable luxury of access to a public library for the first time in our lives. Once a week we would load our little red wagon with books and then we would walk with our mother the six blocks to the library where we would spend a joyous hour exploring the children's section. It was there that I found my first hero. His name was Stretch Williams, and he was a baseball player. Now, I have to confess, I tried to look up the books online to refresh my memory, but I couldn't locate them. Uh, so I'll just have to tell you the story as I remember it, and you'll just have to take your word, my word for it. Stretch had always loved baseball. He loved the crack of the bat, the satisfying thump of the ball striking his mitt, the drama of the umpire's calls, strike three! But most of all, he loved it when he leaped high into the air, stretched his long arm up to snag a ball otherwise destined for a home run, and the crowd would go rock wild with the cheer, STRETCH! And when his stretch flowed seamlessly into a throw for a double play, oh, that was like heaven, a dream come true. They would go wild, and that was what he lived for. So when he landed a job in the minor leagues, it felt like a dream come true. Sure, it was an endless lineup of old buses, cheap food, and fickle fans, but none of that mattered for a while. Then the other players started to get to him. Sure, they might be pros on the field, but off the field, they were about as immature as little leaguers. The constant hurt feelings and bickering and petty rivalries, they began to wear on his nerves. So he began dreaming a new dream. The majors, the major leagues where players were treated like the stars they were, where the food was good and the beds were soft, the fans were enthusiastic and loyal, where players were focused on being their personal best instead of, well, this mess. Finally, the day came. He was called up to the majors to fill in a spot for an injured star, and it wasn't, it wasn't permanent, but at least he had a shot. All he had to do was to give it his all. But he quickly found out that things were different here. The pitchers pitched faster. The ball left the bat faster. He was left hanging in thin air or flat on his face more often than not. And broadcasters and fans began to comment on it. And his nickname, Stretch, began to be used as a point of ridicule rather than affirmation. Still, he ground his teeth in, and slowly, ever so slowly, he began to get up to speed. His reflexes adjusted, his batting improved, his throws improved, but most of all, his groundwork improved, and finally the day came. He made the leap, he made the catch, he made the throw. And the fans went wild! But even then, his dream began to sour. He discovered that the majors weren't that much different than the minors. Sure, the hotels were pricier and the food was better and jet planes had replaced the buses, but long trips are long trips no matter how far off the ground you are. 
And the fans, well, they were just as fickle. And the players, just as petty. In fact, they were even worse. The entitlement, the snobbishness, the backstabbing, the potty mouthing, it was almost constant. He began to long for the good old days, for his guys. He knew their weaknesses. He knew how to handle their jibes. He knew how to play that game. Here in the majors, he just felt off. He could work on his playing skills, but the rest of the dynamics just seemed beyond him. So when the player he was standing in for recovered and he got bumped back down to the minors, he felt a sense of relief rather than regret as he rejoined his team. He was introduced as Old Man Stretch. With his newly honed skills, they were no match for him on the field now. Even the away game fans began cheering for him. And when it came to the bickering of the players, well, he had a newly acquired skill set of insults and backstabbing that put him ahead of them all. The next time he was called up to the majors, he turned it down. His dream had changed. Who needed the stress of trying to be all that he could be? All he needed to do was to be better than the rest. This was his life. He was majoring in the minors now. Now, this story is based on a parable, is a parable based on real events that happened in my life. Jesus told a similar one about majoring in the minors. Let me move my head a little bit so you can see the text. It was Matthew 23, 23. He used a lot less words than I did. Um, I suggest you read it for yourself. It won't take long. But then look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I majoring in the minors? There's my thought for the day. You finish it. Be safe, friends. Be prudent. But above all, look up. Have a good day.